everybody. I'm Hal Weeks for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp with another fun-loving idiot zither video for you wherein we talk about all the different problems and issues that come up uh, that have to be resolved with playing the auto harp. This week it's it needs to be restrung. What am I going to do? Ah! Yep. Once in a while you've got to restring it and um um, the first time that I ever restrung an auto harp, it took me about four hours. Um, I had a whole pack of strings, and uh, I put on, uh, <laughs> I remember I watched Running Man, Schwarzenegger. Uh, there was some other video I watched, too. I can't remember what it was, but it was like movie day. Um, and I just set up a table, and I went to work, and it took me about four hours. Now it takes me about 40 minutes. So... Um, um, this is one of those things that you get better at. Now, I get more chance to practice than you do. I probably restring um, 30 auto harps a month. I don't know exactly what I do, but I do a lot because I work at Daigle Auto Harps where, we, where I do repairs and uh, stringing up new harps. I do it all the time. I do it without um, batting an eye or even thinking about it. Uh, it's quite relaxing, as a matter of fact. Um, there are a few things I'd rather do than sit down and restring an auto harp. Um, but I'm guessing it's not that way for you, uh, given how many people send them to us so that we can do it for them. Um, and it does take, it takes some strength to do it, because you kind of got to keep tension on the string while you wind it up. I'm not going to tell you all the rules about how to do it here. I do recommend the fish hook method, which was uh, invented by John Gray, right in our Daigle shop. And uh, I've told the story that when I first heard about it and learned how to do it, I laughed and laughed for years <laughs> because every time I did it, it was like, this is so much better than the way I was doing it before. Uh, and it's, it's a lot faster and it's a lot neater. And I uh, just learn it, learn the fish hook method. Um, I show it in some of my videos. Uh, Pete's got a video on it on the Daigle website, and uh, it's totally worth doing. How often do I need to do it, people ask. Well, how often do you need to get new sneakers? Depends. Do you have just one pair of sneakers and you wear them every day? Or do you uh, switch off among different pairs and different pairs of shoes and everything? Because And how much do you walk? You know, it, it all depends on you and how much you play. Uh, most likely, the first time you do it, you won't know um, that it's time until you change the strings and you hear the difference. And then you're like, oh my gosh, now I know what old strings sound like versus new strings. And new strings are going to sound a little on the green side. That's true. They sound a little bit zingy and zippy uh, for a few days till you kind of break them in. And then they're just normal. Um, and uh, um, I go through them in about probably about a year, year and a half, and it's always the bass ones that go out really before the treble ones. And uh, it used to be a thing that you could buy, and you still can, um, a, a lower tone range set, which is just your wound strings, which these days is from number 13 on down, um, depending on how you have your harp tuned, of course, but on a standard chromatic, it's those strings, and the wound ones are the ones that tend to go a little dull and dead. And uh, they still make sound, but you want more than that. Um, you want a little bit of uh, um, punch to them, a little bit of sparkle to them. And uh, that's what restringing is for. And uh, I guess another thing people ask is, should I keep a set of strings on hand? Uh, most people would say, yeah, it's a good idea. I, however, ran into the problem that if you break one, um, and you replace it, good. But now you don't have another one of those. If you break that same string, then what are you going to do? Um, I just keep playing, and I order the string that I need, and uh, it comes in a week. And so you can just play right over the gap, and uh, it works just fine. Um, so uh, that's about all I have to say. Learn how to change your strings. Um, you know, it, it just makes sense that 
uh, fly fishermen's going to know how to tie their own flies and how to bait a hook. And uh, um, an auto harpist is going to know how to refill their auto harp and change their strings. Um, and uh, it's what you signed up for when you started playing the auto harp. So uh, um, uh, learn how to do it. And then it won't be so scary because really, like I said, it's like tying shoelaces. So... <laughs> I can't remember what I played on the way in, so I'm just gonna play something on the way out here. I'm Hal Weeks for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.